Hi guys, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. So today, another question that I get asked a lot about with regards to near-death experience and where I went is how did I float above looking down and observing what was going on in the reality of this three-dimensional world where I no longer was a part of. You know, over the past two decades, I've spent a lot of time and effort researching other NDEs, near-death experiences, and I'm looking for those commonalities and those similarities where other people say similar occurrences happen to them. So then I can piece it all together to what is our perception to what actually does exist because it is our conscious awareness that plays a big part with what we actually interact with in heaven okay <clears throat> so today I'm going over to page 35 in my book five years in heaven the teachings of heaven this photo if you haven't watched this this photo here is when I was in my life review so I'm not going to talk about this part today but as you can see from the size of my book I do talk about those big three on the front cover. So today I'm going over to chapter four, which is floating. On here, I've got a diagram, so I'll just put that up if you want to watch, look at, look at it. I physically died in the toilet. Instantly, I was over here in the living room. So if you go past the walk-in closet, back through the bedroom, back into the living room, <clears throat> I was here floating in this corner and I could see the front door opposite um, up here on this wall here so that was the front door coming into the house and then over here this was a doorway into the um, kitchen dining room and then there's a hallway here to the bedrooms so I want to discuss this today with floating okay so I'm going over so the chapter four starts on page 35 of my book and I'm going over to page 37 because here is one thing that is that commonality that a lot of people talk about so first of all I better just explain what happened I was sitting on the toilet hello I'm honest sitting on the toilet and it was like I went to sleep it I had no pain I had no anxiety it was very peaceful to go to sleep okay so I hope that gives people some sort of um um, understanding there that it wasn't a scary event it was natural okay so instantly I found myself in the living room and you know the ceiling of the house that I lived in was a 12 foot ceiling I'm five foot seven and the ceiling was only a couple of inches above my head and I instantly saw the whole room just like a human does so if you stand on top of like a chair in your lounge room and you look down, that's what it was like. But it was so different to that. And I'm going to go in there today. Okay, <clears throat> so when I found myself standing there, floating there, the first thing that I remember was my partner at the time. He came out of the door to my right, which was the um, bedroom door. He came out of there and he walked across in front of me and he opened the front door and two paramedics came in. The three of them walked straight past me and they went back into the bedroom to where my body was in the toilet. So just to show you the map again to explain this. So now I'm here. I saw him come out of this door. He walked across around this chair he went to the front door, let the paramedics in, and they all went back over to here. And I was standing there. I was floating. So at this time, time, because this is relevant now, because we're still in the three-dimensional world where time does exist, okay, in human earthly time. So when I watched them go back in, <clears throat> I had this moment where I looked down and the first thing that I observed was that I had no feet just below my knees it was like 
it wasn't just a sudden, like a cut off, like a um, amputation type thing. But from my knees going down to my ankles, it sort of just slowly dissolved to nothing. Okay. So that's the first thing that I really did think about at this point because I, there was a thinking process that I had. <clears throat> was it scary? No. No, it wasn't scary at all to see myself with no feet. Okay. I remember putting my hand up and I was looking at the palm of my hand and you know now I'm in my 50s you know we get calluses and wrinkles and age spots and other blemishes on our skin but my skin was perfect it was like looking at an angel's hand if you can imagine what that would be like but my hand was so perfect the skin on my hand so then as I sat was just in this place I can't say say sat but I was floating above this chair and there was no gravity there was nothing like a weight pulling me down to the ground so I explained this in my book it's on page 37 of my book okay but what happened to me here was not like that sort of floating when a person floats in water they feel that gravitational pull they wave their arms around in the water so they do not sink. You feel a sort of weight when in water, preventing you from moving as freely when not in water. So you understand. This experience was totally different because there was no gravity. I had no heaviness or forces around me preventing me from staying down, which is what happens with gravity. So it is hard to explain. I was just being there in the air above the ground <clears throat> so this is the first thing that I want to talk about no gravity so that was basically the biggest difference at this time because there was time there because in my medical reports that I now have which bear with me I'll just reach for them these are my medical records from the hospital and in here there is an ambulance report and in the ambulance report they actually state that when they arrived it was first off the BLS crew arrived BLS was basic life support crew so they were the first ones to attend they entered there was two of them it's in the report that's now in my file so here's my file these are all my medical files right so in here is a medical report from the ambulance and what it says is the first crew that attended there was two of them i saw them both and as they walked through and passed me i heard through my ears the whole conversation that my ex-partner had with those two men as they walked in through past me into the bathroom and the ensuite where my body was located okay so in the medical report it states that 10 minutes after their arrival <clears throat> the ALS crew arrived which are the advanced life support crew so again this time I'm still floating above the chair and I say that so naturally because it was so natural to be there I sat oh sat there I can't say that okay because I was being there being there is the right word so as I'm being there in the corner of the living room I observed again my ex-partner come out through the bedroom door he walked straight across in front of me and this time it wasn't just the two advanced life support paramedics that attended there were also other people there as well so he took the two men in to where my body was sorry I've got an itchy nose from my hair but then he came back out and these other four people came in now I've researched the uniforms that they've had 
and one was a sheriff. There was two fire and um, fire department personnel there as well. And there was also another person who I don't have any idea who that person was at this point. So as I was being there in the corner, I've observed like a witness looking down at the conversations that they were having in the living room. They were asking him, which I would call confidential information at this point, so I don't like sharing it. But there was a conversation where they were asking him questions and he was replying and one of them gave him a business card, okay, and he explained who he was. Now, you've got to remember here, my body was two rooms away and I was unconscious still at this point or still clinically dead, I don't know, because that being who was Linda she no longer was relevant to me, okay? Which I'll get to in a point. So, as I'm watching all these people talking in the living room, and I'm just observing, looking down at them, what was I feeling? There was no anxiety at all. Oh my God, what's happening to my body? I had no collectiveness to my body at all my body was not now my body it was a totally separate entity so this persona who I was now who was now being in this floating environment above the chair in the living room I had no concern at all for what was going on in the bathroom okay it was like I didn't care that's a better way to explain it so these people were having a talk asking information about what happened to her that was in the bathroom because now I'm separated and I had no feelings of trying to interrupt and let them know that I was there there was no urgency okay I did at some point think about, oh, I'd like to add my part to this conversation. But there was no need for it. It was irrelevant. There was no reason to want to interrupt. Okay? Because where I was, this being, as I was floating and being in the near the ceiling, I had no concern for what they were doing because it was so separate to me at this point. So from the time in human time on earth, when the first BLS crew arrived, the basic life support, they came through. Ten minutes later, the ALS advance crew came. They went through. And it would have been about 25 minutes after that that... They've come back out with Linda on a gurney. So the other men that were in the house talking to my partner, they were all still there. So they were having this discussion and they were taking notes. You know, there was a man there with a clipboard and he was writing stuff down, etc. And I can remember the whole conversations, even now, 20 years later. It's like it only happened yesterday it is that vivid still in my mind okay so as they wheeled me out into the living room Linda was on a gurney she didn't look very good by the way she looked quite ill they had an oxygen tank on the gurney beside her and she had a face mask on and her hair looked matted like she had hair gel or something in it you know grease now that is a commonality that I have actually researched and other people say that as well that when they see their own body it's like they've got hair gel or some sort of grease through it because it looks really weird so I don't know why it's our hair that does that 
If you think you know why, please comment below or contact me at my email, which is in the description below, because I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, okay? Because the more we know, the more we grow, right? I'm not ever going to say I'm a master of knowing this, okay? I love everyone's perspective. So they wheeled me out. And in my medical records here, in the ambulance report, they actually say that from the time of the first BLS crew arriving until the other crew came and they all left the building, it was 45 minutes, earth time. So I was floating above the chair, looking down and observing everything in the living room for that whole 45 minute duration. So, you know, some people in their NDEs say that they have like a accident or something and they're looking down at their body and then they get drawn back in. So they're only out of their body for some of them are only seconds, some are minutes. But in my point of view, what happened to me, verified in my medical files, I was floating for that 45 minutes. So as they all left the building, the, um, my ex closed the door and locked it because now it's like 3 a.m. He turned off the lights and he locked the door and left. And it was after that that it got interesting. Because <laughs> as you can tell in my book, where I was floating, wow, what did I say it was on page 35? Yep. My chapter about floating starts here and look how much more I write after I was floating. So if you do want a copy of this, the link is in the description below. Okay, it's also available as a PDF, a little bit cheaper. Okay, so let's get back to floating. What was I thinking about? Was I thinking, oh my God, the house is a mess. Who's going to pay my bills? Who's going to look after the pets? Who's going to pay... Um, the insurance, have I got insurance? Because in America, you need medical insurance, right? None of those thoughts entered my head because it was irrelevant. It wasn't necessary. It simply did not matter about anything that was in this worldly experience of the Linda who died in the toilet. Because now... I was totally separate to her, okay? That's something I do want to clarify here. I was totally separate to her. So there was no gravity for one. The next thing is that nothing mattered. Nothing mattered. I felt so peaceful, so euphoric, if you want to call it that, because nothing mattered to me. It was natural. It was love while I was being as I was floating in near the ceiling in the living room. And another thing also was that I had no awareness that this was 45 minutes. It could have been three seconds or three decades because where I was now in this moment it was all present there was no past or future so that's why I didn't have to worry about what I'd done like did I pay the bills who's going to look after the dogs in the future because there was none of that that existed now because time was not relevant either okay so I openly tell people that I floated in the living room for 45 minutes because that's what's documented in my medical files, which you can see here. I blank out my name and my address, obviously, for privacy. Okay. And then the other thing that I want to talk about here too is what was I doing for that 45 minutes? One now looking back at this memory, I was not breathing. You know, you take a breath in, 
you can feel the air fill in your lungs, right? As you breathe out, you can feel your chest going back in, right? I did not need to breathe. And I didn't question, oh my gosh, I'm not breathing. Because now that I was no longer Linda, it wasn't needed. I wasn't needing oxygen, okay? So there was no gravity and I was not breathing at this point for that whole 45 minutes. My skin looked absolutely gorgeous, okay? I was still wearing <clears throat> my pyjamas, which was a three-quarter pair of pants and a t-shirt. And as you can see from the front of my books, even when I was doing my life review, I'm still wearing my pyjamas. So they, the, the pants came to about my knees and I had a t-shirt on. So I didn't even worry about my clothes at this point because I didn't concern myself with clothes even, okay? I remember looking at my hands and just knowing how good they were. <clears throat> and it's only now that I'm back in my physical body that I look at my hands now and I think, wow, look at all the age spots, you know. You know, I see where the veins are from when I was in ICU. You know, there's my scars. Here's my scars here where I was in ICU. And look at here where I had all the needles. Look at all the white spots where I had needles in ICU. It's only now that I'm alive in this three-dimensional world on Earth that I can compare who, how I looked when I was floating <clears throat> to how my body is now. You know, my hair was quite long like it is now and it didn't even bug me like today you know a couple of times I've done this to get my hair out of my face because it tickles as it touches my skin that didn't not happen either okay there was no wind when, when I was floating because even in heaven you know I was up there for like five years there's no wind okay weird no wind so your hair sits perfectly, just like you've just been to the hairdresser and you've had it so, um, I can't say manicured, pedicured or manicured or whatever you want to call it, but it was perfect. My hair was perfect. Every curl was perfect at this point, okay? So um, what else can I tell you about then? I was not breathing and it was natural not to do it. It, and I did not even remember being Linda, okay? At this point, I did not remember anything about Linda at all. Because now, as I was um, being in this space above the chair, I was now part of my soul. I was now about to transcend through that fog stage to heaven and do my life review and then I spoke to my great 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 grandmother over the next five years and I did not have any concern at all about who she was because she was only just a glimpse of the eternity of my soul so I hope that gives you some clarity today guys about what I experienced when I floated there are a lot of similarities with what other people experience as well. You know, if you do want to share your story, comment below. Um, you know, I put my email address below. It's in the description if you want to contact me. Yes. If you do want a copy of my book where I go into this deep, deeply, just look how thick it is. You know, it's a good sized book. <clears throat> um, you know, I've even got a picture in here when I was floating. Um, so there's me there so where's me oh yeah I took it out sorry because it wasn't a very good picture yeah I sort of wanted professional pictures in my book right drawings so it's not there anymore but um, you know the fact that I did not have feet and it didn't even bug me it was natural that I did not have feet okay it didn't worry me at all and the biggest message that I do wish to leave you with today is the emotion that I had at that point, even though in this traumatic experience is happening to Linda off in the bathroom, 
I was at peace and I had no fear, apprehension, frustration. I wasn't angry. I wasn't even remotely upset with what was going on because what I was feeling was the love of heaven. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's question from about heaven and stay tuned for the next one. Okay, bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.